Hi, and welcome today to, uh, to today's webinar. My name is Stephen Bowles, and I'm very excited to be talking to you today about our new remote prompter feature. A brief overview of the agenda for today. We will quickly cover Showflow at kind of a high level and our products that we offer for producers. We'll review prompter specifically and how you navigate to the prompter inside of Showflow. We'll then show you just how to access the new remote prompter feature and then how to use it. And we'll cover several use cases of remote prompter. And then as always, we'll be ending the webinar with Q&A. Please be sending in your questions at any time throughout the stream and either JP chat or myself will be answering them directly. And of course, we'll queue them up at the end as well too. All right, pause right there. So uh, my name's Stephen Bowles and welcome to our webinar. And that was me attempting to read the prompter uh, while at the same time operating it, while at the same time uh, directing a show inside a studio. Um, so super excited to have you guys here today. Today's all about the prompter and specifically how to use our newest feature, remote prompter, in the context of live and virtual events. Um, I think just to kind of get us going a little bit, I said it earlier in my kind of scripted part of this, but um, if you're watching on our live page right now, there's actually a little button underneath that says click to experience remote prompter. If you click that, that will actually open another tab uh, that is the remote prompter. And so I go ahead and encourage you to click that right now. Um, once you do that, it will kind of have a like a little overview uh, explanatory thing. And then the next time I make an edit, it will actually catch you up with where I am in the script. So again, I'll, I'll kind of call out specifically when to reference that tab. And you're gonna wanna have to tab back and forth between uh, you know watching the live stream itself and actually experiencing the remote prompter. So, but anyways, that's what that is. And I'll, I'll call attention to that again as we go. Also real quick, just wanted to call out uh, just kind of what, what the setup looks like here. Cause as always, when you're doing show flow and you're trying to demonstrate show flow, it's a fun little challenge. Uh, but anyways, let's do it. So, so basically here's my setup. Um, I've got uh, Showflow studio right here in front of me. And so I'm actually uh, directing cameras right now uh, between uh, JP, myself, other screen shares, things like that. I've got a podcast kind of, you know, um, condenser microphone right here. And that's just USB coming into my computer. And then of course I've got uh, an actual ring light that you can see right here in front of me. And then I've got the prompter setup way up there. Um, in that prompter setup, I it's just something you can get off Amazon for 150 bucks. It's a monitor. Um, it's got prompter glass, and then we have a, a DSLR camera on the other side, which is what I'm actually looking through and into for the actual live event. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and just shout out to JP Chat, who kind of helps us facilitate all of our AV here. And we have an article that Matt will also be dropping. He's in our Showflow channel right now. Matt, if you could drop the article about the blog and uh, how you get all the, eight, the, the sort of at-home setup kit here. So that's, that's going on. Let me also introduce a couple of other people we've got. So I've also got uh, on the stream today with me, Mr. JP Chat. So hello, JP, how you doing? How's it going, guys? I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So JP is in an entirely different room uh, and he is gonna be representing our remote presenter. And so JP also has up his own uh, screen uh, in front of him and we'll show that here in a second. And he is also on the remote prompter and he's gonna be following along as I go. On our end, if I was to take JP out real quick and add in my own screen share, this is my prompter. So I'm the prompter operator. I've even got a nice little uh, overlay here that I can bring up. So this is the prompter operator view. I'll be walking you through all of the specifics around this. And then I also can bring up JP's remote presenter view as well. So a couple of really cool things. We're really just kind of having fun uh, testing the fullest extent of all of our tools uh, for live uh, virtual event and broadcast. Because at the end of the day, this is its own virtual event that we're trying to pull off right here inside of it. So, okay, cool. Well, um, to kick us off, let me first by just kind of start around uh, what what are the use cases for um, remote prompter? Um, obviously, everyone's been using prompter for years, traditionally use it backstage or in a, in a broadcast control room kind of setup. Um, and so Showflow has a prompter software uh, that is actually integrated in with the rundown. Uh, so where if you make a, an edit inside of your, either your rundown or inside the prompter operator view, um, those are gonna be passed back and forth uh, directly, which is pretty pretty cool. 
uh, and helpful. It also is very helpful if you're going to change the order. It just keeps it from having to, to run back and forth or email back and forth Word files, text files, and loading them into the dedicated prompter system. So today we're not so much just focused on like what is a good prompter. Um, we're more interested in the remote prompter features of Showflow. But before I get into that, I do want to just kind of shout out a little bit to the ways that you can use prompter. So uh, here's an example of really just Showflow's prompter software. Typically, you're going to have an operator, and that operator is going to go into um, our, our tool called Showflow Prompter. Um, and, and they would have a view that looks a lot like your standard prompt, prompt, sorry, prompting operator software. Um, so they're going to be able to control the text size, the, the, the width of the page, the, um, the scroll speeds, all that kind of stuff. And so they're going to be right there. They can also set up a secondary monitor, which you can kind of see in this image right here. And that's, that's a good example and use case where you would actually um, either mirror the output of your browser, right, that's using Showflow Prompter, or you could even use the remote prompter link, which I'll show you how to use here in a second, in a secondary tab on your computer so that you can have a little bit more confidence of what you're experiencing and what your remote presenters would be experiencing. Either way, this is kind of, you're going to have an operator aspect to the uh, prompter setup. And then you're going to have the um, more of the presenter, right? And so again, if you're doing like pre-recorded videos or something like that, this is myself and JP, I think earlier this month. Um, but obviously, like we talked about a little earlier, this is where you're going to have the uh, teleprompter set up with your camera rig. Um, and the camera is going to be looking through some glass. You would have a monitor right there. Uh, you know, with the teleprompting system to where you can actually see the reflection of the prompter um, passed through for the presenter as they're reading live. Um, again, in this set setup, if you're, you know, in the same room, you could use our prompting software and just mirror the output of your overall display. Or if you were to be uh, somewhere else, for example, uh, trying to kind of may maybe stay six feet distance or maybe not even be in the same room with your uh, with your, your CEO or whoever the, 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 your corporate client is, you could actually just have Showflow's remote prompter link and, and basically turn that browser into a remote monitor. And then you could operate that not inside the room, not even just outside the room, but really anywhere in the world. You could do it from your couch if you wanted to. And that is going to be real time. So it's going to be basically in the sub 100 or even 50 milliseconds delay. So really, really powerful thing there. So that's another setup. And then of course the, the classic one, which we don't do as much anymore because we're honestly not doing on-site or live events, but that's gonna be more of the downstage monitor. Again, same concept. You could use our prompting software, mirror the output, run a cable directly to that monitor, or you could have another laptop or some sort of internet connected device that has a browser. You could open up the remote prompter view um, which essentially would turn that monitor into a remote prompter, and then that would allow you to be a way to drive that experience. So again, you could be in the room or you could be not in the room at all, um, pretty flexible in that sense. Um, okay, cool. So next I wanna just kind of show you a little bit about remote prompter and how that works as a whole. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the screen share that I have here to our program. And just a note for everyone who's watching this, um, we are, you might see a little bit of a stutter on the scrolling and you should just know that that's not something that I experience and that's not something that your remote presenter would experience. That is a, a function of our screen share that we use through studio right now is not uh, 30 frames per second just yet. That's our intended uh, intentions, but it's not there yet. And so it will uh, kind of look like it maybe has a little bit of a strobe or stutter but um, rest assured that that is not what we're experiencing. And then if you do pull up that remote prompter link, um, you will also notice that as I start an active scroll, that will be cleaner for you as well too. Okay, so before I go any further, now is the time, again, if you haven't already, if you didn't hear me on the front end, now's the time to click this black button right underneath the player that you're looking at right now on the Showflow Live URL. Open that up and that will open another tab and that might give you a little uh, overview modal that lets you know kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. You can dismiss that, and then once you get in there, I'll start or kind of wiggle around a little bit here, and that should be bringing you up to the current position. 
If for whatever reason this is something that you're not experiencing, you can, of course, share that in the chat, but uh, obviously we would love to have more dialogue with you on the other end. Our hope is that this is, a, uh, this is working enough for everybody today. All right, cool. So let me show it to you. So here I am. I am uh, scrolling up and down. And so the way the remote prompter works is I might scroll smooth and it's going to just catch up to you. It's waiting for me to land. So I just landed at we have our prompter software. And as soon as my, my scroll position rests for a second, it will catch you up. If I scroll ahead and I come down here to say, and when we have new studio software, it should take a second and catch you up. So you might be asking, why is it not a clean, smooth scroll? That's because right now it's not an active scroll. That's just me as the operator jumping around. If I was to actually come in here and kick off the active scroll, which I just did, you will notice that that should be a lot smoother. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. I'm going to slow it back down. And then I'm going to stop right at the if you want to learn more. So that is an experience right there in its own sort of small example of I just turned your browser, wherever you are, into a, a remote prompter monitor, which is pretty cool. I actually don't think there's anything else that kind of does this right now. It's pretty baller. Um, OK, great. So what else can we do with that? If you would switch back over to the live stream that we're doing on Vimeo right now on our marketing site, I'd suggest that you go ahead and do that. And you will see that um, I will show you kind of how this works. Also, real quick, and I meant to say this on the front end, but it's an important note. The Vimeo stream is about 30 seconds behind. So there was a good chance that I hit space bar uh, live for myself and it took about 15 or 20 seconds before you heard me say that but i probably went ahead and advanced your remote prompter before you even heard me say that that's what i was doing and so for that you're right and i apologize i'll do better on the next demonstration of this i'll make sure i, I prepare enough time for that to delay to actually get there um but we'll talk more about that here in a second all right so if you're looking at my uh screen uh my current screen share inside of showflow um, I'm going to go ahead and solo that full screen and bring it up. So this is remote prompter, right? It's the same exact experience as you had in the normal prompter where I can go in and out of edit mode. I can make a formatting change if I wanted to change its color, exit out. And those experiences should be all passing through in real time for everybody. In addition to that, if you see over here on the right panel, we open that up and that's where you're going to be able to control your text size, right? So I can change the text size a little smaller, you can change the text size a little higher. All of these things will absolutely update in real time for that remote prompter. You can also, of course, adjust your line heights. If you go over here to the settings, this is where you can kind of turn a couple things off. I could make it all caps. I could turn the caps back off. Um, you know, just fun things like that. A lot, of, a lot of different options in here. If you haven't already explored our standard prompting software, um, that would be a great thing to do, and we'd be happy to give you a demonstration of it along the way. If you hover up to the very top, what you'll see is now we actually pass through your item runtime clock and the time of day in here, which is kind of cool. Um, and then if we were to have turned this on for your account, and we'll talk about how, we, uh, how you request that to happen at a later time in the demo here. But if you hover up here, you now see this thing called remote prompter. And so if I click that, that's going to open up our remote prompter modal or little pop up. So this may or may not be easy for you to see on your screen, but generally speaking, it kind of gives just a little bit of an overview of how remote prompter works. It allows you to uh, select from a drop down who you want the operator of this URL to be. It's a very important thing. So the operator is me right now. Got to think about that. If you're going to share remote prompter link with somebody, anyone in the world, we need to know, and that remote prompter link needs to know, who is actually operating this remote prompter. Because again, Showflow is collaborative, right? Remember that. Showflow is actually very collaborative. And so you could actually have multiple prompter operators inside of the same script that are each at different points in the prompter uh, sort of presentation uh, and scrolling, et cetera. And so you could actually have an operator who drives maybe a speaker rehearsals, and they could have another operator who's driving the main um, stage production or the main broadcast production. And so that's specifically what that dropdown is, is I'm, I'm choosing to tie this to me. 
There's also an overall access button that you can turn on and off. That's a way to go ahead and even if you had shared a link for a prompter um, for a remote presenter yesterday um, and the show's over now, you would be able to come in here and turn that off so that people just can't jump onto this link whenever they want to and, you know, and keep following along. And at the bottom here, of course, you have the open in a new tab or copy a link. So if I copy that link, I could then text it, email it. I could um, drop it into a Zoom chat, drop it into a studio chat, really whatever you want to do. That's how you would distribute that link around. The way that you got to it was actually just a button on our main live page, but the button just opened a direct route to the link that I uh, that, that is my operator, dedicated operator remote prompter link. So that's that. Um, with that, again, same concept here. If I was to come in, if you want to switch over currently to the remote prompter link right now, I'll wait for about 15 seconds. We'll go ahead and switch over to that. And then I'm going to talk out loud as I make some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and make a change that switches this to be maybe, uh, let's see, command six, orange. I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to do a line return. And we're going to say Steven. And I'll do a formatting change. We'll give him a line return space. And I'll exit out as well, too. So I'll take a second. You probably already saw those changes. And now you're hearing about me talking about it. But the same concept there applies. I, I make these changes, and they happen in basically in real time. If I was to come in here, by the time you're already hearing me say this, I've already kicked off the active scroll. And at some point, I'll stop and let you know where I stop. I'm going to stop right here at the word Stephen. I'll pause here for a little bit. And I'm sure at some point, you'll hear me sharing this over the screen. Uh, and that'll be your sort of assurance that that's what's going on. So anyways, that's kind of the basic premise of how it works. If I was to zoom out one more level just real quick to kind of uh, make sure everyone has familiarity of with, with what it is that we're talking about, Showflow has a prompting system. Our prompting system is browser-based and it's tied to our rundown. When you want to, you can now uh, turn on the remote prompter feature. That allows you to get a link and share it with anyone in, honestly, the world with internet access. An important note about that, multiple people can have access to the same link. So for example, if you had a 10 or 20 person uh, presentation over the course of an hour, you could share with all 20 of them in an email the same link. They would all just have that open in a window and then they'd be able to um, watch live as you prompt, just like imagine it being in a downstage monitor. And then when it gets to their turn, they would, you, they would be caught up to speed on uh, where you are in the script. Um, also, this thing can be turned on and off by the operator. Also, the remote presenter, I'm sure you've tried, cannot scroll forwards or backwards. So they're not able to get themselves out of sync. And then finally, it's real time. If you make an edit to the text, uh, you can make those edits and literally be in a live dialogue, whether you're using our studio software or a Zoom chat or a video conferencing chat, whatever it is, you could be in a live dialogue with them. And you can literally, they could be sending you cues like, hey, let's reorder the formatting of things and you could make those changes and they would be seeing their, them live. This allows you not have to do a screen share of your operator view to remote presenters, et cetera. So uh, pause right there for a second. Uh, we've covered quite a bit. I wanna make sure I call out if you have questions that you send those in to um, Matt and or to JP who are looking at in our stream and they're gonna be queuing up some questions for us to talk about at the very end as well too. Cool. Next, what I'd like to do is demonstrate to you kind of what this looks like if I was to uh, be bringing in a remote presenter and we were to be having some dialogue together. So real quick, I'm going to bring in um, JP chat. So JP, you with me still, buddy? I sure am. <laughs> you look like you were just listening to the Vimeo stream as well at the same time. Don't get confused. OK, so for this part of the demonstration, um, what's going to be nice is because JP is using our studio, um, software that we have and are, is now available for early access. Because he's using that, our conversation and our dialogue is basically near real time. We leverage WebRTC to pull that off. Um, and so this is going to allow me to prompt for JP. I'm going to have him read the screen back to me. And I'll be able to literally live operate and prompt as we go. 
So it's pretty exciting. And so this is just, again, a great example. There's no cables running between me and JP. JP's on the other side of the office. It's a huge office, I swear. <laughs> He's on the other side of the wall, but there's no cables, there's no nothing. And in terms of um, the way that this is all coming together, it's the same thing. I'm going out of my browser all the way up into our servers, and then it's coming back down to JP uh, there. So JP, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add your screen share live. I'm gonna remove myself from the stream. I'm going to go ahead and bring up a nice little overlay so we know it's the remote presenter screen. And JP, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to your, your segment. So ready? Here we go. We're on JP's segment and I will kick us off. So I'll present, I'll pretend I'm the previous presenter by just a little bit and then we'll toss to you. So ready? Uh, studio software, head over to showflow.tv and request a demo. JP, over to you, buddy. Hi, my name is JP Chat, and I'm currently reading text off of Showflow's remote prompter. Steven is acting as the prompter operator, and I am able to see his output by opening a link in my local browser. This link is specifically tied to him as the prompter operator, so my scroll slows down or speeds up as Steven commands it to do so. Something else I should probably comment on is that my setup is a little bit different than Steven's in that I'm using the camera that's built into my laptop. So that means that the text is very close to where the camera is. It's awesome. That's great, man. So uh, JP, you did great. Uh, you know, I think you did wonderful. I think you might have a career in this. It's great. Um, so yeah, so that was a screen share of JP's actual computer. He was doing his screen share through Studio, which again is a new tool that we've got and that allows you to direct a show just like I'm doing right now. And JP has joined in to our studio as a remote presenter. JP kicked off a remote presenter screen share and is sharing the very browser that is the remote prompter link that I shared to him. So a lot of really a lot of show flow on show flow going on there, but um, pretty cool stuff. And so, and just a reminder, if you were watching it through our stream on Vimeo, that uh, you might have seen like a little bit of a frame, uh, less than 30 frames per second. And that's not because the scroll experience was like that, but that's because our screen share currently is not optimized for 30 frames per second. Um, and so it just won't won't represent the full uh, fluidness of the scroll. But JP, I, I'm sure you can attest that your actual scroll speed there was pretty smooth, right? It was indeed, yes. <laughs> cool. All right, well, JP, uh, I'm gonna share one or two more things. Oh, dang it. Uh, I'm gonna share one or two more things, and then I'm going to um, uh, prepare for some Q&A. So if you don't mind preparing for that on my end. And then real quick, I'm going to uh, talk just a little bit about the prompter um, operators uh, scroll controller. So I'm going to switch to a different camera here. And so for anyone who's watching on the Vimeo stream itself that Studio is actually producing right now, you'll see that I've actually got a, uh, a shuttle. It's called a Shuttle Pro V2. They also make a shuttle itself, just a regular shuttle. Um, and so this is really, we've already built some profiles around Studio and, well, Studio, but also for the prompter and for the operator himself to be able to use this tool. It's like a hundred bucks. I think you can even get the other one for 30 or 40 bucks through Amazon. I think we have an educate article, maybe uh, Matt, if you don't mind sharing that as well. We have an educate article that talks about the gear and where you can go buy it and the profiles that we've got built for it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and add my screen share one more time. And I'm gonna keep sharing, uh, showing this kind of right here. But you can see that I've actually built it to where if I hit just the space bar, I kicked it off. And uh, sorry, the, this little hockey right here. And if I move my inner scroll here, I can speed up and slow down. I can even reverse the speed. Again, if you're looking at this on the remote prompter, you would be seeing that scroll speed happening right there. Also, I've got a couple of short keys. I've got one up here in the upper left that lets me take that to the previous uh, queue uh, or script. So you can see I'm moving to four, to three, to two, uh, forwards to three, to four, and then again, just a simple hotkey right here will act as a space bar. I've gone in the reverse direction, go back and forward. And then the inner jug shuttle here will represent our, sp our, our speeds going forwards or backwards. Also, if you're not in an active scroll and I move the outer uh, shuttle, that will be uh, the equivalent of me moving with my mouse. And so that's, again, not something you want to use in terms of a live pro active, active prompting. Um, it won't be smooth enough. 
but that's good for just kind of jumping up and down and getting into the right spot that you want to be in and then hitting the um, hitting the equivalent to our, our forward space bar to get going. Cool. So that was just a little bit more I wanted to show you while we were there. So with that, JP, I'm going to open up you and bring you into the chat here as well, too, and let you go ahead and say out loud if there's any questions for us right now. Uh, yeah, one of the uh, most voted up questions is in regards to how you are going to import script content from, say, a Word document into Showflow's prompter. It's a great question. So um, a, a little bit of perspective on what we're looking at here. So I'm going to go ahead and solo this uh, screen share full and just kind of let us take a look at this a little bit. So I need to actually pop us out of full screen here uh, so you can kind of see. So the, the prompter is actually um, tied to your rundown, right? So if I was to actually click up here in the upper right corner, I can do an old eyeball. And I could switch over into traditional compact views or table-based views. And really, the prompter is just a column in your rundown that you're choosing to be the one that you pass through into your prompter. I share all that to say is in terms of importing content into Showflow, it's the same as you would import one of our rundowns. You can just import a CSV that has all of that content ready to go. Otherwise, the simplest form would be to just copy and paste. So for example, if I went down to this row right here, which has no content, I kind of have like a little Lorem Ipsum generator here, and I can bump that up to be even more content. I can hit copy, and that's the equivalent of grabbing it from you know Microsoft Word. I could go into edit mode here, hit paste. There we go. Now, when I swing back over into the uh, switch over into the prompter operator view, which you can do by simply selecting that column and saying take to, take to prompter view, or you could do it through that eyeball as well. Um, and then now, if I jump down to that one that we were just talking about, I think it's the next one essentially. Where is that one? Well, I think this is all it. This is all my Lorem <laughs> uh, I think it just didn't have an item title, so that's probably what threw me off there. But so now you can see it's in there, and I'm sure you're following along with me as well too going in and out of edit mode as well. Also just note, you could have, I could have uh, pulled all that content and just copied it from Microsoft Word and just pasted it directly right into uh, the edit mode here. So you don't have to build from inside of the rundown. You can build from right in prompter or you can build in the rundown and then really just bring in the operator um, for your rehearsals or your day of show. And that's where they're really dialing in what the operator type experience is. But that's actually a benefit. Uh, in general, in my opinion. Um, you can, as a producer, as a scripting team, really work on the whole thing, including the prompting script, the script, and then the operator comes in and they're decorating what they want the experience to be for, from a presentation perspective. They're doing that, um, you know, on their own. Uh, the content was already in there. So that's the answer to that. There has been discussions on uh, internally and, and good feedback from people who have been using Prompter that like, it'd be nice to import essentially a Word document or uh, or a text-based document directly into like into the scripts uh, or into the prompter. I think that makes good sense. I love that idea. And if for anyone who uh, likes those ideas as well, um, we'd be happy to follow up and have more dialogue around that and learn more about what that use case is. But in general, I get it. Cool. JP, what else? What's another question that's been coming up? Well, the second part of that one question was outputting from Showflow into a Word document, which we do have a solution for that if you do want to show that. I don't mind. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so real quick, swinging over into Showflow, um, the way that you can output it is, again, if you swing back over into the um, any of the rundown kind of views here, um, there is a downloads option. And from there, we do have a Word export download. Um, when you do a word export, you can actually define which column you want to export. And so this one already has defined the scripts column. You can even say uh, skip over content that doesn't have any, uh, sorry, skip over item rows that don't have any content in them. And then that will generate a word document that you can then um, uh, have for printouts, et cetera, as you want. Cool. Great question. Next one, JP. Uh, the next exciting one is about how Showflow Prompter integrates with Studio and what our plans for that are. Ooh, yes, I love that one. Yeah, so uh, to kind of like um, 
talk a little bit more about what that might look like. Uh, I think for me, I'll probably just jump over to what we call uh, the old showflow.tv. Um, and so if you look at our studio, uh, which if you go to the very, very top here, you can see software and then you can choose studio. Um, and here we've got a, the nice best representation of what we're trying to do with Studio and how it integrates in with our other tools, specifically Prompter. So if you click the presenter view, you can see that we're really all about, um, you know, helping people produce in, in, in this kind of crazy climate right now where we're doing virtual events and then, and then even with hybrid events. And so we're really trying to build out this pre uh, presenter view. Um, where it's really a series of widgets that bring the best of all of our tools together into one view for a remote presenter. So in our, our current presenter view, you can see that we've got the rundown as a widget in the bottom left. We've also got the prompter as a widget in the, in the, in the center. And then we've got chat as a widget in the bottom right. And then we've got our studio type uh, stuff up here, which is a multi view of other presenters and then the program output. So my vision and our vision for this and for you is that you'd be able to be in a presenter view, depending on what tools you're using. Maybe you do or you don't have a studio a component being used, although you should. Um, you don't have a studio component to it. Um, then you could take those pieces out, but still benefit from a rundown, from a prompter, from a chat down below. Also, we really want this um, layout to be something that we offer in multiple layouts where you could uh, get the prompter widget maybe towards the top, right underneath the actual presentation, uh, or sorry, top of the browser. So it's actually closer to right underneath the actual lens if you're using the standard uh, camera that comes with your laptop or closest to probably a DSLR setup that you've got sitting right above your actual monitor laptop. Uh, either way, having some flexibility in the arrangement here. Uh, will be key. But at the end of the day, your experience would still be pretty similar in terms of um, you would have an operator that's uh, a prompter operator who's driving it from the operator side of, stu of Showflow, of the prompter. And then you'd have the remote prompter who in this scenario is not using remote prompter in a dedicated URL just to that, but that it would be um, sort of embedded into this widget in the remote prompter, or sorry, in the presenter view as well. Cool. Next question, JP. Uh, one of the next questions is, uh, I think based on someone mishearing you, they were asking whether or not you can actually move back. And of course, the answer to that is yes. That's the oh, problem. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In, in terms of moving back, you mean scrolling in the reverse direction? And yes, you can. Uh, and we're getting another one now. Uh, do you need the full Showflow Studio pack to be able to use Showflow Prompter? You do not. No, and that's a really great question. I'm glad you guys asked it. Um, so we're we're really wanting um, for you guys and 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 we, the way we look at this ourselves is we've been intentionally expanding beyond the rundown. Uh, and so we want to be a suite of tools that you can hire. Um, for different use cases um, and where possible use them all, of course, uh, but um, you could just use the prompter dedicated on its own. You don't even have to use the rundown component to it. You could also use the rundown and the prompter synced together, or you could use the prompter, the rundown and the studio all linked together. And again, I just wanna make sure I make a note. Studio is something that we're developing right now, but it's not currently got all of these widgets together. Um, but we are in development on those widgets coming to the presenter view there. That's a good question. What else, JP? Yeah. Uh, right now, I don't think anyone submitted any more questions, though they may have submitted them through the chat channel <laughs> yeah. uh, instead of the questions area. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look like uh, we have any more questions. That's great. I want to make more one more note before we wrap for the day, and that is, Reminder that uh, in the prompter experience, we have a lot of different ways to engage with it. So you have the featured view as well too, which just to highlight that for a second, this is not an active prompter per se, where you can hit the space bar and drive it forward, but it's a really wonderful way to use the rundown side of the software where you're still benefiting from durations and time and even tracking. Um, and to have a nice like featured spot for the um, script. And it's also a really great way to make edits 
for the script while maybe somebody else is operating it. So again, if I wanted to, I could come in here and maybe just make one edit here and um, change it from brief to a very short. So being able to just make that edit here fluidly, that passes directly into the prompter view as well too, um, the, whether you're in the operator view or in any of these views. Um, and then just again, reminder that anyone who's looking at that remote prompter operator URL, it's tied everything to my view. So if I change the text size, which I just did when I re-entered into remote prompter, it changed that text size. But if I bump that back up, that should be nice and big and large for you too. Also, one more note I wanna share is that we um, really tried to be intentional about building the remote prompter URL to be something that can open in mobile, um, iPhone, iPad, et cetera. So very good use case for it as well there. Awesome. Well, JP, I appreciate you joining in, and I appreciate Wait, you. Uh, uh, Stephen, uh, actually, we had a few questions pop up oh, okay. in the last 30 seconds or so, so I figure we have the opportunity. We might as well. Uh, okay. One of them is from Jeff, and I don't think it's really serious, but I'm curious myself. How long have you been growing your beard? Oh, my gosh. That's a Sturgis. <laughs> that has to be a Sturgis. Um, my beard is, I'm more of a lazy shaver, so it's more like how long have I like not been thinking about growing my beard or shaving it, and it's been about five days, so that's where I'm at now. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. Uh, and also, um, a question regarding using prompter for presenter notes instead of an actual script. That's great. I love that one. So, yeah. Um, well, a couple of things there, and I'm not sure if I'm quite set up to be able to demonstrate this, um, but I can certainly talk to it. So a couple of things, reminder that a uh, prompter can be both uh, a fully scripted type experience, or it could just be some bullet points. So let me jump up here, and I'll use this uh, start show as a point of reference here. So I could actually just using our bullets, um, I could just come in here and say, this is you know bullet one, and bullet two, and then bullet three. Um, and then as soon as I hit save, that should be seen by you guys, et cetera. And so what's nice about that is if you, you know, sort of format it accordingly, right? If I maybe add some extra spacing here, um, and, I, and I, you could kind of have it to where that remote presenter is actually just seeing speaker notes. And then for you, you could actually use just the left and right arrows, and that will just pop you to the next script, right? So um, that's that's an interesting way to do it. I'm, I'm of course jumping all over because I actually don't have uh, content in every single one of my cells. But if you did, that would be a, an interesting way to do it. It basically is the equivalent of speaker notes through a PowerPoint where you do white text over black. But the beauty of this one is, is that you can make changes right there on the fly. So he that person could be reading bullet one, bullet two, and then you could go in here live, and I'm sure you're probably on this position already in your script at this point, and you could say, toss to video. And maybe you could make that, you know, uh, call out more specifically. And that's what's nice is that, that that would be seen live by everybody. So you're able to pass those notes directly to your remote presenter um, real time. Uh, which is pretty great. So that's a good use case for using it. Also, just another note, which again, we don't really um, entirely promote this specifically, but you can upload images into the cells or into the prompter. Um, so you could actually even use visuals like that um, to be passed through in real time for people who are looking at the remote prompter. That's a good question. Anything else, JP? Uh, yeah, we, we do have a few more actually. Uh, one of them is in regards to command functions and uh well you, you already kind of covered it but whether or not uh the sorry the question just moved on me do command functions work in the browser on the operator like command f for finding that perfect point in the script that's the uh question example but i think what you covered were the fact that we do have keyboard shortcuts that can be even mapped to tools like the contour shuttle to quickly jump up and down on the script as the prompter operator 
Yeah, yeah, that's great. And yeah, I mean, Command F should should basically um, work. You can see I'm typing in video, and it's certainly highlighting me to the next video spots. So that would work. And I'm and as I'm making those changes, as I'm moving my own viewport around, um, it's bumping you guys around too, which is cool. That's correct. Yes. And the other question, um, good question we got is, in regards to the remote prompter link being secured. Yeah, so uh, I think what you probably mean by secured is like maybe like there's a passcode or something like that um, because, uh, well, and I can just walk through this from sort of um, a higher level to the lower level. Um, from the highest level, is it SSL? Yes. Um, so is the data encrypted as it comes across? You know, yes, you're benefiting from Showflow. In terms of is it something that um, could be shared around to multiple people? Um, it is that, yeah, right now it's not something that, um, you know, I can turn it on and off kind of like guest pass, uh, if you're familiar with using our guest pass in the rundown. So I do have the ability to shut off the URL um, and to shut off the real time pieces to it, to where if somebody was to hit the URL, they would basically get hit with a no, you do not have access, but that is a parent level uh, on off for that URL as a whole. Um, and, and then is it something that we could add like maybe a passcode to to where you know only only if you know the secret key can you get in? Um, that's something we've considered as well too. I have varying degrees of opinion on that in terms of whether or not that's actually an effective way because it's very easy to bypass. But cosmetically, it can uh, present like it's more secured. But anyone who's actually malicious uh, can usually get past those, i.e. getting Zoom bombed pretty easily is not that hard. So. But yes, the, the, the answer, the short answer to what you're asking is um, you would actually just have to turn the overall link off and that is how you could secure it. Yeah. Um, one of our questions, and I can just go through a few of these quickly, sure. uh, is in regards to what screen you have mounted in your prompter setup. They asked if it was an iPad. In our setup, it isn't, but because uh, our remote prompter link does indeed work with mobile devices, you could put an iPad underneath there mm -hmm. and have that be the source for your prompter rig. Um, another my own, yeah, exactly. I think this this monitor we got is like a hundred bucks off Amazon. It's pretty cheap, low rent. Yeah. And another one quick another quick question is uh, does the prompter and or prompter operator eat an active seat license? Uh, the prompter operator, yes. The uh, recipient of that link, uh, the remote person or talent, they do not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, it seems we got a duplicate question here, so I'll just say any plans to integrate prompter into studio? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and if you go on our showflow.tv slash studio page, you'll see some of the mockups of how we intend to do so. And uh, how old is JP's beard? I don't know. I did shave like this morning, so but just a trim. Just a, trim. Just a little trim. <laughs> Uh, and how much of this is available in your standard show flow? So yeah, sure, I can take that. Um, yeah, so what you're experiencing here today is, uh, well, okay, so reverse that. If you already have prompter as a part of your license, or if you're in a trial of prompter or anything like that, um, you can request that we turn the remote prompter on and we will. So our expectation is that the remote prompter is really a part of our pro level version of prompter, which anyone who is in our current customer base is essentially a pro prompter user. Um, so think of it, if you're already a prompter operator, imagine that uh, everything we're showing to you, it's just a matter of us turning it on for you. And um, we're just trying to phase that in so uh, we can learn as people are using it. Um, but that's all that's required there. Outside of that, because Showflow is now three different products, which is the rundown, the prompter, and the studio, um, we, you would need to activate prompter on your account. We're happy to, if you're interested in it, turn on prompter for a two-week trial and let you explore it. All you need to do is either reach out to us in the direct message um, with on the marketing site, you know, through that little blue chat, or reach out to your uh, representative here at Showflow if you already have a dialogue going with us. 
Um, but that's all you need to do, and we'll turn that on for you there. And we can also turn, of course, the remote prompter on as well. The way, though, to look at all of these products are just that um, each one of them come with their own active seats. Uh, so I would expect that a rundown uh, account has maybe 10 or 15 or 20 users that maybe are, are your, your active users that you're interacting with the, the rundown side. The prompter, maybe it's one to two active users because, again, we don't expect that your graphics operator needs to be an, a prompter operator. And if they want to, they can be. It's really just a matter of how many active users you need. And really the same goes with Studio. That would be an additional set of active users that you would uh, incorporate into your license. Cool. All right. Pretty much there, JP? We are. I'd just say um, a question came in about bandwidth. We do recommend uh, broadband, but we have seen remote prompter links work on a lot less than that, like mobile devices. Mm -hmm. And as for what we do recommend for prompter, all I can say is a Chrome or Chromium-based browser for the best experience. It's the best, yep. And we have tested it, though, in the Safaris and the Microsoft Edges, but uh, generally speaking, where you can um, show up the leans forward into modern web technology, and um, those are going to be Chrome generally leads the way in that space. Um, well, awesome. This was fun. It was a little bit of a, it's always a unique challenge, like I said, to try and demonstrate Showflow itself. Uh, using Showflow, but I think I think we got it. Um, remote prompter's cool. You could turn any browser in the world and as many of uh, um, as many of them as you want into a monitor. So very simple use cases literally can be just throw it on a 35 inch or a 50 inch TV in the corner of your studio without any cables. Just you need to have obviously just some sort of uh, Raspberry Pi or something like that that kind of fires up and lands on the link. So pretty cool stuff. It's pretty much just stays um, listening to the operator. The operator can leave and then come back and drive it again later. Um, it's it's pretty uh, awesome. Yet you know you might say simple from the monitor side of it, um, but I think it brings really high value. So at minimum, kick a, kick a note over to us and kick off a two week test drive on it and let us know your thoughts as we're trying to build this tool for it to be helpful for you guys uh, as we're all trying to figure out how to produce events in this crazy world. So with that, I will say thank you to JP and um, thank you to Matt who is supporting us on our uh, chats. And if anybody would like us, we're going to send this video for everyone afterwards and you can share this around inside your organization. Um, if you want to explore Studio, again, reach out to us as well too. It's sweet. You should check it out. Um, and with that, have a great rest of your day and we will catch you on the next webinar. See you later. Bye guys.